about he's uh, very popular on the webinars there's a lot of um, seminars and talks out there and um, has fantastic information so we're going to be getting alex in in a few minutes but before we do that let's find out what the communication channels are yes communication channels this evening are the communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046 927 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. Thanks Mary. Yes, 0469271212 is the number for the studio this evening and every evening. Um L L O L O M Radio dot com. Sorry, 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 sorry. If you're coming in from outside the Republic of Ireland, which I forgot to say, it's gonna be zero zero three five three four six nine two seven one two one two. Yes, oamradio.com is the website, and if you want to check us out there, you're more than welcome to. We will also have the link up there for Facebook, that's there. The YouTube link is there. Also, the link for the uh, the TuneIn Radio link app for your smartphone or your Android device or your tablet or your all those newfangled devices. You can get the OIM, or the, the OIM app on the TuneIn Radio link. The TuneIn Radio link. Yes, I should start that again. I was putting my teeth in earlier. It's yeah. your turn. Now. Sorry. Yes, the TuneIn Radio Link application for your smartphone and your iPhone. You can download it from uh, the Play Store or the Google iStore or the whatever the hell it's called, and you can get us on there. Yes, we also have the web, not the website, the chat room on the website. That is oamradio.com. You will see the chat room there. You can log in. And a big hi to everyone who's already logged in. I want to, just while, I, while I'm thinking about it, I want to have a big shout out there to Eric, Jim and Liam. I said I'd give you a mention and there I've done it. A nice hook one up with you guys last night. Really enjoyed the evening. And what else we got? We have the People's Internet Radio as well. We're going to, we're streaming on there. We're going to monitor the chat room there also for the questions. Now, let's hope I don't make any more mistakes. That's okay, you'll be fine. Yes. I just have to say thank you to Liam. I have on the unscripted script 2015, I didn't replace it. January 2015. January 2016. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, next <laughs> Back week. Back in the time machine. Next week, yeah, next week we'll have to change that. Okay, now before we get Alex on, um, we had the United We Strike Radio Marathon. It was on yesterday. We did our usual pre record half hour show. If you want to catch up on what's going on with United We Strike, loads of information, pop over to unitedwestrike.com. And their show should be on there as a podcast. You can play that, you can download it and listen to us scabble on on things that went on um, during the week. Now, normally, as you know, we have a few things to read out and then we go off to Alan's and Steve's week. But we want to maximise the time that we have with Alex because we know Alex has loads of information. So we're going to be bringing, bringing Alex in in a minute. But Steve's going to give us a quick bio about Alex and his background. Yeah, OK, a quick bio on Alex Collier. Uh, Alex, uh, Andromedan... Contactee Alex Collier has had his has had his face to face contacts with blue skinned human ETs from the Andromeda constellation and the Andromeda Galaxy, which have included multiple visits abroad aboard their tremendous motherships and decades of telepathic contact. Alex talks of the Andromedan civilization and their council to which the Palladian ETs appealed for assistance in dealing with a dangerous malevolent ET confederation plaguing uh, humanity and much of the galaxy. Alex describes in detail the members of this malevolent ET confederation consisting of reptilian ETs from Alpha Draconis, the Orion Group, and the Grey ETs from Zeta Reticuli too. And it appears that Alpha Dracon, Dr- Draconan reptilian ETs have been manipulating humanity into a nearly invisible system of servitude for aeons, or eons even, uh, feeding off our labour and our bodies uh, through the wars that they instigate and the hostile belief systems which they foster in the form of religious and social institutions. Alex's life has also been threatened nine times. There you go. So, obviously he has very good information to talk about. Good evening, Alex. How are you? I'm great, guys. How are you? Brilliant stuff. Good. Alex, thanks a lot for coming on. Much appreciated. The bio that we just read out there is probably very, very brief because we know you have uh, one hell of a background and your knowledge and experience of things that you've been involved in. Is there anything that you want to add to that before we move on? Uh, it's all been said in, in um, you know, previous uh, recordings and radio and and interviews and, and, and talks. Um <clears throat> Should we should we go no, through? It, no, it's it's it's. I think with anyone, 
you know when they say um, old souls? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're not necessarily talking about age. What we're referring to is experience mm. um, in physicality, let's say in particular third density. When you say someone's an old soul, uh, the reference really means they've acquired a great deal of wisdom from trials and tribulations. Mm. Um, because it's it's usually, you know, the, the, the people that are really good to you and love you give you love and happiness, and the people who are really mean and cruel to you bring you experience. So um, that's kind of, you know, that's maybe the only thing I could add to that is, um, you know, not only in this life but many other lives, we've all, we us old souls, we've garnered and gained a great deal of experience. And as I was joking with you earlier, it is not necessarily the years but the mileage. Very good, very good. You know? And you, you are obviously a believer in reincarnation of learning lessons. Do you, is that something that you you go with? Everybody does. Mm. Uh, there is no avoiding that. Um, you you know you may you may have a particular lifetime that's very easy and you just kind of cruise through it. Um, but you know that doesn't mean in the next one or the one after that, you know you get to skate through as well. Um, it, it, it's all about learning. It's all about growing. It's all about you know learning how to exercise power, uh, when to do it, when not to. Uh, it's it, it, living in experiences about empathy, learning compassion, um, learning responsibility, the ability to create our reality and to do it responsibly. Uh, I mean, the list is is endless as to all of our reasons for being in physicality. Mm. Um, okay, tell me something. Just obviously, people have talked about the whole reincarnation side of things, and there is a belief out there, boy. You know, going around that the archons have um, basically controlled that as well. So when you actually die and you see the the light at the end of the tunnel or the light, this is archonic, which may, basically they they take your your soul or your spirit and they 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 turn you around and then you're put back out again down the line and they have a control. And some people are saying that there's a way of getting through this grid, that when you do die, that there's a way of getting out because the planet is now kind of like a prison planet and there's you know certain people that say they have uh, there's borders or there's um, gates around the planet where um, they're not letting anybody out because of what's going on what's your take on that side of things um there there definitely is something to that um one of the things that i was told many many years ago by phaseus before he passed away or left their physicality was that um, if one wanted to be free of the reincarnational cycle of the earth, that when you crossed over and you left your body, instead of making the decision to go to the light or allow or, or um, allow yourself to be drawn into the light, which is that system that you were just referring to, okay. that you turn around and all you have to do is when you turn around, you'll see the entire universe – and all you have to do is make the decision, I want to go home. And bam, you are there. And now you're free of Earth's reincarnational cycle. It's over. So you have to be aware of that, though, before you pass over. That is exactly right. right. You exactly have to, be, you have to be aware of it. And do you not become like an earthbound spirit instead if you don't go to the light and you stay kind of earthbound? You know, the whole ghost thing, that, that's pretty interesting. Uh, those are people who didn't make a decision one way or the other. And what they've done as, as spirits is they've trapped themselves in a higher third density, lower fourth density um, because they didn't make a choice. And now they're kind of stuck. And how they get freed from that position, um, I don't know. Um, Viseus and Morinay wouldn't address that. And I don't know the reasons why. I know that there are times that they would not answer a question for me because they said someone else was meant to bring that information forward. So maybe that's what that is. Okay. Are you still in communication with the Pleiadians? Or who who do you speak to now? Who who do you link up with? Um I I, I I've never spoken to the Pleiadians. Oh, okay. Um I have seen them on occasion um on motherships or why what I, who I was told were Pleiadians. 
um, but I've never spoken to them directly. Um, I only speak to uh, the Zenitaeans from the Constellation of Andromeda, specifically Morinae. Um, specifically Morinae. It was Viseus, but, you know, he crossed over at 4,381 years. Okay. In their, in their time. And have they told you about this? You know, we hear about the energy that's hitting the planet and changing the, um, the, the human frequency, and it's a high energy, and that some people can adapt to it and other people won't adapt to it, depending on your own vibration and your energy. Have you been told anything about this? Yes. Um, as far as the vibration, everything is frequency. Uh, you know, in, in, in the DVD and the, the book, the, the Secret. I, I suppose, I, from what I've heard, they were asked to take out the word frequency. Um, they weren't allowed to use that word, but you know, that's the magic word. Everything is frequency. Yeah. And we're nothing but radio tuners. So the higher your frequency, the more channels you bring in. And we're talking about cosmic knowledge, cosmic energy, which, of course, we are all a part of, even if we're dumb as a brick. Mm. We are still pulling in some at that energy. It's just that, you know, you're not tapping into the knowledge and the wisdom. Okay. Um, just the, basically the life force. And then the ego takes over, and, and many people are operating strictly on ego and not spiritual higher self. Mm. So... Um, this frequency that's coming, well, one of the reasons it's, it's, it's finally hitting us uh, in such a magnificent way is because the, the net, um, the barrier, the field that was uh, put up to um, separate us from that knowledge has been, has been taken down. Um, the benevolent ETs burned it to the ground, which is to give you the best analogy, um, so it's no longer up which is why we're seeing this huge sense of awakening. Uh, there were many holes in it put in it over the years, but just recently the whole thing came down. Uh, so, you know, now what's happening is that many people are waking up, even those in the lower minion management areas of the um, New World Order or whatever you want to call it, the um, powers that be, the regressive hierarchy, those who thought they were in for one reason are now realizing they're in for another. And of course, this is creating a lot of stability for those guys at the very top, um, you know, who aren't us and really don't give a damn about humanity at all. Yeah. So um, it's positive. Not only that, but it's also having an effect on our DNA. Um, it is absolute scientific proof that some children and some adults now have third stance of DNA and, and, it, and it's changing dramatically. And, you know, we used to live longer lives. Um, one portion of our DNA that was turned off by the Anunnaki was the fact that our bodies used to be able to create vitamin C on their own. When they turned that off, it dramatically changed uh, our life cycles. Okay. And they did it on purpose because then we were easily, easily controlled. And uh, for a while there, we were becoming equal to them because we're, we're very astute. We're excellent learners. Um, and we are extremely creative and very, very adaptable because of all the DNA we have in us from different races. So, um, you know, we're sort of a Heinz 57, but at the same time, we're genetic royalty, and that scares a lot of races because we have literally unlimited potential. And uh, some races, for some reason, see us as a threat. And, and it might be the ones that have been hurting and suppressing us and enslaving us all these years. And they would be right. I think once we woke up, uh, we would definitely be pissed off enough to want to, um, you know, address the issue directly. What do, you think and, the, what do you think the chain of command is or who's in the chain of command regarding the, you know, from, from draconians to the archons to the global elites? What way do you see it, you know, panning out? From a hierarchical level. Um, that's an excellent question. Regressive ETs, um, I don't necessarily think they're all reptilians. Some of them could be uh, human hybrids. Some of them could also be uh, other different types of races who we would consider humanoid. Um, who the actual ones at the very, very top, the four or five, that I understand that basically 
have the final decision or who create the um, holographic structure that controls humanity, I can't honestly say. And I think there's a reason why. Okay, let me just say that there are some questions that I've asked, and Morinay said it would be better if you didn't know. And at a later date, I asked him, well, why wouldn't you tell me these things? He goes, because we know you will tell the people, and that would put you in very serious jeopardy. So there are some questions they don't address to me, um, and, and that's the only explanation I get. And I know when they say that they can't address it or they won't address it, I know to move on um, because I've tried for years to get some very specific information about myself. And they don't. They won't address it. They they want me to discover that portion for myself. And um, you know, it's taken me a long time to get to get past that. And and now I actually appreciate it because now now I I I have greater depth into my own being and who I am. And had I not done that, had I not done the work myself, I, I wouldn't be in the place I am today. You know, there's there's the easy way, and then there's the hard way, or the right way, excuse me. And many times the hard way is the right way is the hard way. Mm. So, But some people, you know, get to a stage, and I'm sure they have, um, where enough is enough. And maybe they decide to, you know, um, leave this plane prematurely because they've had enough. And as I say, a lot of people have said to me that they're at a stage now where they're, they're, they're feeling tired because... You know how just the fight with they're the fighting and the fighting and the fighting, and they're not seeing any results now. I know that the global elites or the new world order, whatever name we want to call them, are really speeding things up and trying to get it in because of the mass awakening that's going on. Would you kind of agree with that? Oh, I absolutely would. They're definitely trying to get ahead of it um currently, they're a little bit behind, I think, um which is why uh their timetable has been moved up and and they're scrambling, and they're getting more and more desperate, for lack of a better word. Um, as far as to address people getting tired, I can tell you that on a spiritual level, nothing tires or wanes the soul more than poverty. Yeah. And this is why the whole monetary system was, was instituted, because uh, there is a significant amount of very evolved spiritual beings here who have chosen to come in and, and help humanity. And, and, you know, in our previous experiences in other worlds, uh, the experience was different because we didn't have a monetary system. So to many of us, to experience a monetary system in this life and at the same time, you know, have to go to battle with these dark forces, it's, it's a great deal of work. And many of us just simply don't have the experience in doing it, you know, um, having to survive every single day just to eat or just to have to pay rent yeah. or to support our children. Um, and as we were talking before the show about, you know, taxes and, you know, governments make all these absolutely ridiculous decisions. I mean, just absolute asinine, showing no le no common sense whatsoever. And then they turn around and say, well, you're going to pay for our mistake. And then, then they absolve themselves of any culpability. Um, yeah, who wouldn't get tired of that nonsense? You couldn't do that. You know, they throw you out, put you on the street, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the system isn't fair. It's not rigged. And I think by our very nature, we're very, we try to be very fair, and we try to keep things, uh, the playing field level at all times and give people the benefit of the doubt. But unfortunately, you know, the dark side, they don't play by any rules. You know, they, just, they make shit up as they go along. And we're always having to try to catch up to what they're doing now. Um, but, you know, things are coming to a head. Uh, they absolutely are. We're not alone in this battle. And um, there is a great deal of pushback coming from off, off the planet, outside the planet, in our solar system and in other, other solar systems in the galaxy. So, you know, for the record, the frequency of the galaxy is changing. It is, in fact, going up. Um, so, you know... Not to offend anybody, but these pricks, they're going to have to go somewhere else, and they will be. It's just certain things are playing themselves out, and, um, you know, they're, they're kind of using humanity as a hostage at the moment.
Well, we're talking about that because obviously on the, the likes of TV series like Star Trek, they talk about the Prime Directive and not to go near, you know, certain planets that have, um, you know, a certain race on it. But what, you know, and that's all great from, say, a, um, a spiritually aware and advanced ET race or alien race. But the negatives like the Draconians and the Archons don't seem to be bothered about any Prime Directive and they're just going straight in and... Well, we've said this before on the show where, you know, we, we, we know that we have to put up a fight and we have to fight the system. And that's fair enough. But if they're using machine guns and we're using bow and arrows, it's, a, you know, it's kind of unfair, you know? Uh, it, it is. It, of course it's unfair. But, you know, let's, let, let me give you a little background here. Earth used to be spiritually evolved. During Lemuria, the beginning of Atlantis, uh, the consciousness of the planet was very, very high. It was then corrupted, and significantly through steps of um, creating religions, creating wars, uh, creating different languages to separate humanity uh, over the last, uh, I don't know, 100-something thousand years, uh, the frequency of the consciousness of the, the beings on the surface in the planet and um, the planet itself have been significantly lowered. It was an intentional um, attack to do that. Okay, so, um, and the fact that many of us here have other extraterrestrial DNA in us, that gives benevolent races the right to intervene because they spiritually and um, genetically are connected to Earth. So they have a right to do that. Now, if they were to eliminate all of these genetic seeds, this would eliminate the ability for other races to intervene. So, you know, keep that in the back of your mind because that's important, you know, when you, when you hear that, you know, they want to, they want to terminate, you know, uh, nine tenths of the earth's population. Okay. Yeah. And they already, and they already know who they want to save. So, you know, these, they're just pricks. Well, are uh, they, are they terraforming the planet for their, for themselves? Is that way we're getting all this, you know, uh, obviously the, the planet changing, like the likes of Fukushima, animals dying and all that, because it's terraforming to what they want. Well, you know, I'm not too sure about the nuclear radiation part, um, but I think what they're doing is they they have technology to clean the planet, uh, uh, virtually clean the planet of all of this, probably within 30 to 60 days. The technology exists. The alien technology exists. To do that, to restore the air, the water, etc. Uh, they even have machines that they could drop into the ocean, and they they could change the water from salt water to fresh water. Wow! They have this type of technology. Mm. Okay, so that's but that's not the issue. I think what it is is that they want to keep our spiritual vibration so low by creating fear and saying, "Look, um, there's just too many of you." Uh, we need to um, cleanse the planet, or even worse, you know, some of you may have to go and live on another planet. So we want to take you off this world. When the shit hits the fan, we want to take you off this world and bring you to another Earth. Well, the group that's here, that is not their agenda. Their agenda is to beam you up into a lunchbox. And I don't know how else to say this, okay? That's what they want. You yeah. surrender your free will, and you, they will beam you up into a lunchbox. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, then I, I can't help you. Well, we, so you should, you should never do that. We've had um, Stephanie Ralph on, and we have talked about this, and Stephanie said the same thing. All the movies that are out there, even the, the black and white movie, um, How to Serve Man in the 60s, was a cookbook. And then you have Jupiter Ascending, a movie talking about you know, the humans being food. Um, so we, we, it's, it's a subject that we talked about before, and the whole thing that they need your consent, you have to agree to it because isn't is there, is there some spiritual or universal rule which they agree to that they would tell us what they're doing, and if we don't um, dispute what they're doing or disagree with it or we consent to it, then they can do what they want. That's exactly right. I mean, you have the Pope, you have the Queen of England, and others saying, you know, these are the end times. Well, why would anyone, I mean, if, if you read uh, scripture, 
uh, who's at the end times for? It's the end times for the bad guys. But why would we invest anything into an end time scenario? I'm not ready to go. My children aren't ready to go. You know, why would we even buy into that nonsense? We're the ones creating this reality. They need our frequency. They need our focus to create this scenario. And if we just tell them, go to hell, we're not doing that. We're going in this direction to create light, to create peace, to create harmony, to create compassion, to create abundance. You know, we can just starve these bastards and they'll have to leave anyway because it's all about frequency. Okay. And, and what, that's all we can do. Okay. And what about timelines? Have you have uh, have you looked into timelines at all and, and, and seen where we're going? Because we've heard rumors that they've tried to change the actual timeline to suit their needs. And every time they do it, like nature, it just resorts back to the timeline we're supposed to be on. Uh, that's exactly right. Um, that's exactly right. You know, And, and they, they've tried to manipulate that with alternate timelines, and, and one of those has collapsed, and... And one of the most negative that they created is is actually, I think, pretty much merged with this one, um, which, you know, fascism was everywhere on the planet. And that's not hard to see. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, we're getting a lot of help with that. But as far as timelines, you know, it's very difficult to actually narrow anything down to a timeline, even even the extraterrestrials, because it's it's being created events and the reality of consciousness is being um, it's being created every single day, every single moment by us. We're the kingpins here. You know, humanity is the kingpin here. We're the ones holding this together. It would just be so nice if we could all get on the same page just once, you know, for a few weeks or a few months or even a couple of years. Mm. Just everybody be on the same page, you know, and then we – we wouldn't allow ourselves to be manipulated by governments, by the press, by religions. What a bunch of crock of horse shit. Mm. And, and I, you know, you can obviously tell I feel very strongly about this yeah, because I have, I have been battling this for years. Yeah. Not only me, but so many other speakers and, and researchers who have done remarkable work trying to tell people, hey, you know, wake up. This is all a crock of shit. Yeah. And of course, you know, you know, as you say, because of our DNA and who we are uniquely to the, to the ETs and the negatives, we have the ability to manifest, manifest, which is what they want as well, I believe. Yes, yes, of course. Well, that puts them in control. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's what it's all about, and that's what it's always been about. Um, listen, something very important. The Archons, they are artificial intelligence. They're AI. Okay. Okay. So when you look at the decisions that they make, you have to look at it from a different perspective. You're not dealing with beings that have soul. Mm. That means they're not capable of compassion. Okay. Well, they're like politicians then. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so where does... So oh, that's a scary thought, isn't it? Well, yeah. we politicians over here who don't have any souls and they have no compassion, trust me. I think we can all relate to that. Have you uh, had any uh, information or uh, looked at black goo at all? Uh, no, I've not. I've not had the ability. I, uh, I have very limited Internet access, unfortunately. Um, I can only get it when I go to the library. And uh, that's usually just for a couple hours a day if I'm lucky to get on. Yeah. So, um, okay, well, that's... that's... No, no I, I've, I've heard about it, um, but no, I, I don't have any definitive information on it. That's okay. One of the questions I said before we went live, we've had three guests on the show and who do their own research and have their own contacts to ETs, or, and, and basically they've said to us uh, in their own words that they believe that there is a percentage of people on the planet who will be, for want of a better word, saved because of, you know, its service to others and their energy is right and everything else. What's your take on that? Do you believe there is a percentage or there are people on the planet who, if there is kind of, you know, and I want to talk to you about Planet X and, and the planetary changes that are taking place at the moment, but do you believe there is a percentage that would be saved, for want of a better word? Well, my experience um, with the A's is that they're interested in trying to save anyone who wants to be free. 
Um, I don't know anything about a percentage. Their goal is to free humanity, all of humanity. Now, whether people choose that themselves or not, that's entirely up to the individual. But, you know, they're not looking to save a percentage. They're looking to save all of humanity or as much of humanity that they can, um, you know, barring infringing on anyone's free will. So I don't know anything about that scenario where they're going to, uh, you know, catch you, pick you up, or do a rapture or anything like that and say, okay, we're going to protect you, but not the rest of humanity. Uh, that scenario doesn't feel good, and it's never felt good to me. Okay, okay. And what about the actual uh, climate changes that are taking place globally? I mean, we know they have harp technology, and they're being... There's been quite a lot of talk about HARP, and we've seen weather patterns and conditions taking place that have never been seen before, um, never been recorded. What do you think is going on there? Um, I think it's all technological manipulation. That's exactly what I think. Mm. I think they have an agenda, and um, what they want to do is to try to make the Earth as sick as possible and lower her vibration as much as possible so that they have an excuse and they can they can convince people, okay, folks, you need to leave these corridors of the planet. We need to move all of you into the inner cities. Oh, 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 wait a minute. There's not enough room for everybody. So, um, you know, we need to uh, we need to eliminate everyone over this age because they're useless eaters. They're unproductive. And, um, you know, half of you are going to have to go to make room for the rest. Yeah. Well, Georgia Guidestones, that's really what you're referring to, where you have the 500 million, yep. yeah. Yep, yeah, they have to telegraph everything. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we don't have to buy it. We absolutely don't have to buy it. But, you know, people need to be literally conscious of all this stuff every day and, and all of their decisions. And, um, you know, people are starting to, to come around. You know, what that number is, I honestly don't know at the moment, but... You know, the the dark side is literally forcing everyone to wake up. And I'm hoping that with the help of the benevolence that uh, we're going to outrun these idiots. I, I really do. I really hope we're going to outrun them and that humanity is at some point going to have this aha moment, um, whatever that looks like, and we're just going to put our hand up and say, no, we're done with this. You need to go. Yeah. You know, you need to go. We will be responsible for ourselves without you manipulating us anymore. And, you know, we have the capabilities of doing that. You know, humanity, Abraham Lincoln used to say when he had a very difficult time making decisions that he would leave it up to the people because of their innate common sense. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's just not an American thing. That's a global thing. Everyone has an innate ability of uh, amount of common sense to know what's right, to know what's wrong, to know what we should do, what we shouldn't do, to what's bullshit, what isn't. You know, we all have that, that tuner. And in some it's greater and in others it's not. But we, you know, we all have that ability to tune into common sense and know what's the right thing to do. And, um, you know, that's that that moment is coming. It's going to be forced upon all of us uh, because, you know, we're not separate from each other, whether we live in different nations, whether we have different creeds, different uh, uh, facial features, uh, skin tones. You know, we are still one race, whether you like it or not. Well, I, I always say, Alex, that we are spiritual beings in, the, in physical form experiencing life. I mean, we are all spiritual beings. We might all look different. Than, you know, I mean, the governments and the powers to be create borders. We didn't create borders in our mind. They created the borders, you know, and they created the, you know, the different countries and, and, you know, calling people different races and stuff like that. We, we're all spiritual beings at the end of the day, I think. And one of the things that's been proven time and time again, kids don't, aren't born uh, racist or they're not born with, you know, bad attitudes. It's what they're, it's a, it's a learned procedure. It's a learned process from the environment that they're in. Uh, yes, that's exactly right. It's exactly right. I have no argument with that whatsoever. But nonetheless, those things do exist. And for those who do carry 
those frequencies or those those blinds you know they we still have to address it we still have to address them and say look you still have a choice here to let go of that horse to, to drop all that nonsense mm. because there's nothing to it mm. you know you can change any belief system by creating another belief system or by choosing a different belief system one that benefits everyone mm. um, not just you know, the, many of these decisions are based on fear of things that aren't even real. So, you know, we, we still have to address all those people yeah. that that have those blinds because they they deserve the opportunity to let them go. You know, to just to see it for what it really is, nothing but a control mechanism and a manipulation. Exactly, and it's all it, again, it's all negative. It's all forced. We had uh, Mark Stevens on last week, and we talked all about the legal and the law. And he made a very relevant point and he said, everything the government does is forced, you know, and basically if you were to coerce or use um, extortion or threaten people or beat people up, you would go to jail. But because you have this body called the government, they can force you and coerce you and do everything they want because they're the government. So they've made it legal to do it. So everything is forced upon us. We're forced to do things. Although people might say, like the example was the driving license. And he said, people say, oh, well, you volunteer to have a driving license. Well, if you drive your car on the road without a license, see what happens. Well, you get arrested. So that means you're forced to have a license to drive. So everything by the government is forced. And that's technically null and void from a contract point of view. Well... That's not to say that some form of government doesn't have a place. Um, for example, uh, well, gosh, you know, that's a whole other scenario. That's a whole other conversation, which I wouldn't mind having. But, you know, here in the United States, the government of this country originally was created to represent the different states and colonies uh, with foreign affairs. That was its sole purpose. It wasn't ever, ever meant to become the monstrosity that it is today. So I think when you have limited forms of government that are here to actually serve and help the people, that's it can be a good thing. But when it takes over and the people now have to serve it, that's not a good thing. And... Um, you know, when when people abdicate the management of their government to politicians who then get controlled by corporations and banks that have their own single agenda, what you end up with is corporate fascism, corporate communism, and or corporate socialism where everyone serves the government. Yeah. But, you know, that's on us. That's on us because... We let down our guard. I mean, there's enough smart people on this planet that know that. Yeah, and we have to wake, we have to wake them up. What's your take on um, the second sun and Planet X? A lot of talk about Planet X, Nibiru, um, all these kind of names, Wormwood in the Bible. What's your take on that? Oh, it's coming. It's definitely coming. And, um, you know... There are there there is a timeline that I've been given, and the timeline and, and I know this is subject to change, based on what's going on out there, and I'll share with you something that I haven't shared before, but there is a timeline and 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 that is is that, um, mid mid March somewhere between the 16th and the 20th, the weather is supposed to get very very extreme. And if it continues on its present trajectory, somewhere between the end of April and the beginning of May, uh, we will all see it as it literally approaches and goes over planet Earth. Now, there have, now the benevolent groups, they've talked about trying to change its trajectory. And the only trajectory that they could change it to that wouldn't affect the Earth, would dramatically affect the rest of the galaxy. In other words, changing its orbit. The problem with that, though, is that the one that would help the Earth, one of its satellites, a.k.a. moons, strikes the sun. 
So clearly that's not a that's not a benefit to us. Yeah. So um, they're doing a lot of planning and contingency plans to mitigate its gravitational pull on the planet. But that's not even the biggest issue because they can mitigate that. The biggest issue is it's got a mile, a million mile trail of debris that our planet would go through at least five times over the next five years. Okay. And the debris is a real issue because they turn into comets and asteroids. Yeah. Um, we've, so we've heard uh, about this. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of talk about plowing the road, but you know, everyone on the surface would see this. This would not. This could would not and could not be hidden anymore. So humanity, uh, this alone would be an aha moment. You oh. know, uh, they would see the intervention, and of course, this would cause an enormous amount of problems for all the governments uh, who have been lying and suppressing all this information all the technology for years and years and years, uh, it would literally be a man, humanity's mass awakening at this point. Okay, and um, obviously that's going to, we've, we've heard about this coming in, what about the likes of um, the pole shift? Because um, we've heard that there's been about, what, four or five times before in the past, we've gone through this, uh, the Earth has gone through this a number of occasions, and this is now the sixth or seventh time, whatever the number is, of this pole shift that's apparently going to take place because it's about again balancing the planet and putting it back on back on track do you think that that will be you know the planet x coming in is part of the pole shift uh it's happened it's happened 11 other times where the planet itself has had a pole shift not all of them are the result of of uh Hercopolis, uh, nibiru planet x whatever name you want to call it um some of them have been just because of asteroid strikes that caused the planet to tilt. Um, it could happen, but I know that the benevolents are trying to address that by mitigating the extreme gravitational field that this dark sun has as it crosses over us. Uh, one of the things they want to do is mitigate its grabbing our, our poles, which in fact causes us to flip. Okay. So that's being addressed. Um, I don't know to what extent that could be, but you have to understand, you know, the, the Earth has the ability over time to heal itself. Um, we just need to learn again how to live with her, you know, and not force her to do what we want, because that's not going to happen. You know, we have to, again, learn to live with her, like many of the native uh, tribes and uh, native civilizations have you know, before us. They had the technology. They were able to use it. The technology that's suppressed today, um, you know, what Tesla created with ley lines and uh, using free electricity, you know, the technology exists where we can easily have what we have today without polluting the atmosphere or harming the earth. Um, but again, the objective from these rogue groups that are controlling the planet was to lower everybody's frequency. Yeah. That was the plan, and that's why we have these issues today. And now they're trying to stir up all this fear, which would even lower our frequency more. Well, there's two emotions, love or fear, and people have to choose which one they want to vibrate at. Well, somewhere between it is neutrality. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so because it's all there, this... It's just not the two extremes. Yeah, it's just the... It, well, it's very hard to be vibrating at 100%, even on the love side. So you have to kind of find a happy ground. Um, but to understand what's going on, you know, open your mind, as we say, that's why we call called open your mind, and to wake up to what's going on. And one thing that was said to me by um, one of our a guests before we had on, John Anthony Hill, ja, was he said, our, our goal in life is to move away from ego and ignorance and to move towards humility and wisdom. That's all our goal, because if we move away from ego... The planet would change overnight if we just switched off the ego. Now I know ego is part of us, but we can control it rather than our ego controlling us. And the world would change overnight. Even just changing that, even realizing ego and controlling that. Yeah, uh, but unless you're you're spiritually evolved or you're working on your spiritual self, you wouldn't know the difference between your higher mind 
and your subconscious mind. I agree. Yeah, no, totally agree. Totally agree. And that's part of the kind of wake up process. But listen, we're going to go off to a few questions. We have a few questions that's come in. So we're going to quick fire them over there. I'm going to pass you over to Steve and Steve's going to call them out to you there. All right. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I'm just uh, copying and pasting the the, the the last one in there. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, questions coming up on the chat room, Alex. Um, in relation to the subject matter to hand, um, the first thing that that I want to ask myself is when when you kind of said air earlier that you know if there was negative or extraterrestrials trying to control us and and manipulate us that we could we could simply just say to them no go away we we don't want you. Um. That that's kind of, I think that's very simplistic to say that because um, there's a lot of people over here, and obviously in your country as well, who are being oppressed on a daily basis by yep. by governments, and a lot of the people, thanks to the likes of drugs, welfare system, and um, all, all crap being pumped into the sky and crap being pumped in via vaccinations, and then you also have TV as well. I don't think pe- people couldn't even a lot of people couldn't even stand up to the next door neighbor and say enough. So I mean, for for them to to stand up to a, an an ET race, I think it would it would be very very difficult. I mean, where where do you reckon that the 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 I don't know whatever is going to be needed to 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 make have people make that step? Where is that going to come from? I know it's probably going to come from within, but you know, if people are just so dumbed down, I think it's kind of asking a lot of people. You're absolutely right, and I and I know that there are people here, uh, or I've I've gotten emails in, in the past from people who wanted help because they were being um, attacked and manipulated and uh, physically abused, mentally abused by specific extraterrestrials um, on a on a semi regular basis, and you know I, I've tried addressing that with more and a. And his responses were doing the best we can to eliminate the threat to everyone. Um, I don't know that there's a simple explanation to it, yeah. and I don't mean to be simplistic. But when I when I say, you know, just say no, I, I'm I'm referring to all of humanity, where we all stand together. And but is know, it, I is, don't I, I I yeah. Is this one of those I, cases, Alex, where we we there would have to be like. A, a, a let's say a seventy five percent or even fifty one percent of the population would have to be awake and realize what's going on. Would it have to be like a majority to say no, go away, we don't want we don't want whatever you you are trying to do onto us. We we don't want that. Because the way I figure is and probably a lot of people out there who are listening to, to the show this evening, um we seem to be part of the 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 minority. So I mean if there's only let's say ten percent of the whole planet or the whole population uh, of the world awake, then we're, we we are in a minority. So I mean, you know, even that's kind of difficult. Does there, like is is there a quota or a percentage whereby there would have to be? Do you know, you know, you know where I come from. Where how do we say seventy five percent would say no, we don't want you to go away, and they'd say okay, well that's a majority, we will respect that. Uh, well, I I've heard the same number probably of, of, of at least ten percent. Um, I believe that number is actually already higher. Um. You know, I, I I don't have a simple answer yeah. to this particular dilemma. I simply don't. Um, you know, I know that when I've been screwed with, it, there was only one incident where it was a, a regressive race. Uh, that was dealt with immediately in my case. But I don't know the reasons it's not for other people's cases. So, oh, shit, I just don't have an answer. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why it is the way it is still. Yeah. But I, I know that intervention has occurred. I know intervention is continuing to occur, and I know they're not going to go away because we are significant to the growth of the galaxy. Um. Yeah. We we serve a purpose. We serve a purpose, and. Whatever that purpose is, um, it is necessary enough that many benevolent races have left their star systems, and they are here helping us mitigate these regressives and then eventually unshackle from them and, and learn to stand, you know, in our own light. 
Now, but what's what's in it for them, Alex? I mean, what, why would they leave there where, wherever they are to come here and help us? I, I was told that in the sometime in the future, um, uh, eight hundred years into the Andromedan future, our entire galaxy um, fell into tyranny, and all of the benevolent races put teams together to go back in time and find out where this tyranny came from. And they've all traced it back to this solar system, to this time now. And if you've read Michael Sala's book regarding um, the extraterrestrial influence, it's his newest book. I don't remember the exact name of it. Basically, what he says is, is that uh, humans and our colonies, both on Mars and in other star systems, one of them being Altar, I don't know if that's in his book or not, that basically we are building these weapons for the regressives, and that they are, you know, giving them to other regressive groups to basically, you know, have a war in our galaxy. Right. So does that mean, I mean if I'm understanding you correctly, just just to get it straight in my head, that what we're doing now has a, a, a negative effect on the world in the future. So therefore, other races have come back from the future, kind of like in... in it sounds like kind of back to the future, if you know where I'm coming from, to put right a wrong that happened and that's going to happen in our lifetime. Is is that it? The expression that Morinay used was to right a terrible wrong. That is exactly right. And and in coming back, you know, they see this entire scenario. They realize that not only are we being used and manipulated, but we have been so suppressed that we can't even struggle to remember who we are spiritually. And they're like, whoa, you know. This is so not right. And, um, you know, and then, and, and then you have the genetic piece, you know, that's also connected to it. So there is a lot more going on. There could be more that I'm not even aware of. Yeah. Uh, but, but what I am aware of, I have shared. Can I just say, say something, Alex? We talk about disclosure, and this has been going on a while. Um, and, you know, to be honest with you, if the benevolent ETs came down and showed themselves in the sky, the game would change tomorrow. Uh, well, what about the 75% or 80% that aren't, aren't awake? Well, what would happen? What would happen to them? Well, the, 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 I, I pretty much believe, and you know, from from the research that I've done, is that after they did the War of the Worlds in the 30s with Orson Welles, um, and people thought it was real, and they were running out in, into the lawn with the shotguns, they realised that the consciousness of the planet wasn't ready to find out about the ETs. So basically, they used Hollywood. This is what my research has has, has brought up that they used Hollywood, um, to start um, you know, making movies. The first movie was financed by the the military was the day the Earth stood still, the black and white movie, and then we had their Star Wars, and then we had their all the sci-fi movies and everything else. And the whole idea was to climatize and desensitize people, to get them aware. So when you ask people, do you believe in UFOs? People go, oh, of course there must be other, you know, other planets with life on. It can't be, we can't be the only one. And the whole idea was to raise the planet's consciousness of the possibility of life on other planets. So when something like that does happen, that people go, oh, sure, we knew about that anyway. So... I don't know what level of consciousness consciousness we are at the planet at the moment. I don't know where we are, but we are a lot further down the road than when we were in the 1930s. Well, I would agree with that, but I can also tell you, and I've addressed this, you know, over the last 15, 20 years, the first group of aliens we meet are not going to be friendlies. Yeah. They're going to pretend to be, but they're not. So if you were to take the scenario and the good guys show up, um, now what have you raised the vibration or have you lowered the vibration? Mm. So, you know, this is a chess game that's being played on at least three dimensions, possibly four, with multiple moving parts and multiple multiple um, agendas. Mm. I don't have all the answers. Okay, that's okay. Steve? Yeah, no, I don't think any, any of us has, has the answers because there's so much information. There's so much information. I mean, I know you, you've heard your information, Alex, and we hear different information from different guests. And some of it, some of it you know, it, it, there's, it's like people are on, on the same page, but some of it is just kind of, of way out there. And actually, one of the questions that come in is kind of in relation to to the, 
the information. Like uh, Chris, Chris, one of the long term listeners of the show, was wondering, uh, can we ask Alex, how can he be sure that his contacts are not using him to spread false information and distract us from the real truth, whatever that may be? Oh well, I've I've tested that my whole life, and yeah. uh, I continue to test it just so that I know, you know, because because if I'm wrong, it's all it's all on me. Um, I have yet to ever catch them in a lie, and if I say I want to come back, they bring me back. Uh, the only thing they don't do is if I want to say when I say I want to stay with you, they won't let me do that because this is my place. Um, they have always treated me me with respect. Uh, what's interesting is that the information that they've given me that I put out 20 plus years ago, you know, is all being confirmed now yeah. by other multiple sources. Hmm. Um, and sometimes you just have to wait and see how it goes. Um, but, you know, the reason I, I took this risk without maybe having fully thought it out was because, you know, I care. I, I definitely care about humanity, about us. And I've had an opportunity to be off world and look at us in a completely different light. And I have, you know, our behavior. I have another race in which I can compare their behavior and how they treat each other and with how we treat each other. And so I have a point of reference and, and I think it's valuable. Um, I mean, yes, you, you know, we all make decisions without a hundred percent of the, of, of all the information. And sometimes we get lucky, sometimes we don't. But I feel that all the information needs to be out there uh, so that we at least have different perspectives so that we can make an intelligent decision. I mean, after all, we are talking about the future of our humanity. And, you know, to me it's worth all the risks. And why, why did they pick you, Alex? What what was special? Is there a DNA or blood group, or, or is there a reason why they picked you? Uh, I was one of them at, at one time before I got caught up in the life cycle here. Okay. Oh. I was one of them. Okay, so that that's why. Steve, yeah. you've got a question. No, you, you kind of answered my next question. I was going to say, when, when you're off world and you kind of you look down and you look at humanity, if you like, for want of a better word, um, do you, you know, if if you had the power in in your hand, would you press a reset button, or you know, do, do you still feel that there's there's hope for us? I mean, have have we gone too far, you know? So would we need to be kind of just a, a reset button, so to speak, or do you reckon like that we're still there's still an, still we still haven't reached the point of no return there? Well, no, I don't believe we've reached the point of no return. I and and I don't know that I would ever I would ever believe that. There have been times, guys, where I've I, I I might have pushed the reset button, um, you know, just and 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 recently, as a matter of fact, when um, you know, when you hear information about the United States government funding ISIS, yeah. and then you look at the brutality and horrible things that ISIS does to people, and you know, here is our government that's supposed to represent, you know, freedom, the light on top of the hill doing exactly the opposite of of what it purports to be and you know there's numerous incidents incidences of this in history um you know there are times where i get so angry i want to just you know do the reset button but look at the growth that humanity is going through and you know the lessons that we are learning here and the the knowledge and spiritual growth that we will take from this experience will literally change the galaxy. There is no one who says different on the benevolent side. They realize our potential is magnificent. And if you look, and if you were up in a craft looking down at humanity, and you were able to see all of the suppression that is going on on the planet from every direction, and how people and families still love each other, they love their children, they protect their neighbors, they they look out for each other, they and you know, there are so many good people here who continue to struggle and do the right things and carry love and goodness in their heart. It's all worth it. It's all worth it. That 
this this regressive, this Wall Street pirate shit, this this you know horrible negative side. That's not really who we are. No, it really isn't. Mm. And if I thought it was, I would push the reset button. But I know it's not. Yeah, I, I agree. That we're uh, the energy that we're um, vibrating on, or most people are vibrating on, um, is not exactly the vibration we should be on. Um, and that's because it's been manipulated. Where do you think, um, or what do you think of Vladimir Putin? Do you think Putin is is part of the chess game, or do you think he is actually making a change and deciding to move away and to make a difference? Well, um, for me, the jury's still out. Um, but I have to admit. I'm I'm rather impressed with him and China in taking their stand against the Western corrupt banking system. I, I am. They've absolutely taken a stand. And um, on the surface, I'm, I'm extremely impressed with that. Um, he's also a very, very good chess player, by the way. Excellent. Well, and, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, I think ultimately he's going to look after his own, which yeah. means Russia. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I cannot say that with any clear conscience that our government has any interest in protecting us at all here in the States. And do you, on your crystal ball or what you've been told um, by your sources, where, where do you think we're going to go? I mean, is this just a slow progress over the next, say, 100 years? Or, I, I mean, can you... Is, can we say the next five years, the next ten years, that we're going to see a change? Do you, do you have any kind of time that you've been given? Uh, yeah, between now and um, 2017, the end of 2017, maybe the first quarter of 2018. Uh, and, and I've addressed this, I think, in the last webinar, that the river of change is going to be dramatic. There are going to be dramatic shifts in humanity. Um uh, and how the planet works and operates uh, very, very quickly. It's, it's a lot of things are coming to a head, not to mention the fact that, you know, our entire solar system is now moving through the galactic plane uh, uh, of, the, of the galaxy, which is an enormous plasma field, which is going to change and alter our DNA. So there is a lot of things going on. Uh, most of it, 90% of it is positive, but unfortunately, we need to get past this 10% of really rough, patched, despicable ugliness that we have to let go of. Um, and, and that's going to be a real growth opportunity for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, because, you know, spiritual growth is hard work because you yourself have to do the work. You have to, you have to look at your shit. You have to own your shit just like all of us are doing, you know, myself included. And, you know, there is no one you can blame that crap on. What you believe and why you believe it is entirely up to you. Mm. You know, to choose to choose not to forgive is totally on you. So, you know, these are all things we're going to have to confront. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally, totally agree. We had Laura Eisenhower on uh, last year, and Laura said the, the window of w where all the turmoil is going to be is between 2013 and 2017. And then after that, there's going to be kind of changes taking place, and uh, which kind of ties in what, you, what you're saying there as well. Um, where, I mean, obviously, we know that the, the elites are trying to rush everything in, to st you know, because they know people are waking up, and the last thing they want is to have a global, conscious, aware population that know the game and what's going on. Now, Personally, I don't think they'll be able to stop it, no matter what they do, because it's the energy of the planet. People are beginning to wake up. You know, there's people that I've come across that I'd never thought. And Steve, you said the same thing. Even if they only wake up to a level where they're not happy with the government, they know they're corrupt, and they know there's something going on, and I'm not happy with it. Even on that level, that's part of the awakening, as far as I'm concerned. You're absolutely right. You know, there's a great song by Jerry Rafferty, um... Uh, that whenever I hear it, it reminds me of the, the, the powers that be of the New World Order. You, I changed the lyrics, but it's called Change of Heart by Jerry Rafferty. Yeah. And um, 
uh, it, it's it's basically about, you know, they, they simply refuse to have a change of heart. They've been wearing a mask so long that they believe that that's truly who they are now, and, and that's it. That, that, that's, that's the cast, the die that they have cast. And um, it's a very interesting song. So, And do you believe that with this DNA change that you're talking about, do you believe we're going to have certain abilities that we've been told we're going to have? Well, we already have the abilities. It'll be easier to use. It'll be more readily available. Um, you know, I mean, there's some great psychics. There's some great mediums. There are some great healers on the planet already. Yeah. Um, there are some great visionaries already on the planet, uh, great speakers, um, great intellects already on the planet. That will only exponentially get better as more and more people awaken because that that knowledge, that knowledge and experience is locked in the DNA and the higher self knows it's there. It's just it's just being able to hold once the DNA triggers and turns on we will be able to hold more light. The frequency of our bodies will rise, making our antenna and our ability to tap in to cosmic knowledge that much greater. And and, 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 and there's no stopping that. And you know? it, it, we were told by one of our guests, and I don't know whether you agree with this, that CERN was designed to stop the energy hitting the planet or restrict the energy in some way so we wouldn't benefit from it. But obviously... You know, for whatever reason, on multiple occasions, CERN has been taken out. Do you believe that? Oh yeah, I do. I absolutely believe that it's been taken out. Um, and my understanding is that they were trying to open up a portal into lower fourth density and bring in very, very dark energy. That's right. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. To solidify, um, to so so solidify the regressive presence and the lower vibration on the Earth, because. Of, of its effect on the future of the galaxy. You see, it's like, you know, uh, any team, any chain is strongest, is stronger except for its weakest link. Well, Earth is that weak link. And when you look at, at it, what it's really about, it's not the planet, it's our consciousness. And they found the weak link. They're, they have been doing their best to take advantage of it, to abuse it, to tweak it, manipulate it. And they have been somewhat very successful but you know that's over and and now what we're doing is we're playing out the reclaiming of our power the reclaiming and raising of our vibration and our frequency and basically giving these guys the boot and say get the hell out of here yeah yeah and it's it's it there is a a mass awakening we're seeing that on a day-to-day basis steve you got more questions there for alex i do yeah well we are seeing an awakening um, because like, every, like probably like yourself, Alex, Alan, and I, we we do our best on a daily basis when, when we're not doing doing the show. Uh, in in our, our our other lives, if you like, we do try to educate people. And I have to say, by degrees, you can see people opening up ever so slightly. And as 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 Alan mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, uh, like we don't want to awaken everyone everybody up to everything that's going on all at the one time because it would just be a, i think their their download system would just crash with all the information or else well you know but, but you know what people when people are ready the information comes to them or they find it i totally agree i yes. totally agree yeah yes. but that's what we're we're, we're kind of like uh, i see us as like gardeners we're just going around plant, planting seeds and like we we just plant the seed. And this is what I do all the time. I give give someone a piece of information. I don't generally expand on it if I know they're not, they're, you know, they're not open to it. But I plant the seed, and then I just let nature take its course. And at some point in times, not not a lot of times, but sometimes it has happened where people will actually come back to me and say, "Do you remember you you said something to me about whatever the subject matter may be?" And they'll say, "I've heard this and I've heard that," and like that's fine. But but even from what I see. Just in my circle of people who I mingle with, it seems like it's it's taking a long time, you know. Because we were, I know you you mentioned things are going to kind of escalate in 2017, but like this has been going on for a long time. I mean, we know people who have been doing research into a lot of this stuff for 20 and 30 odd years, and you're kind of thinking, will it ever come to a head? I, I mean, I'd love to see a change. I'd love to see a positive change in my lifetime. You know, I, I it would kill me. Well, it, it wouldn't kill me, but you know. It just it would kind of anger me to think that we're doing all this work and trying to educate people and help people, and there's a lot of other people that are doing a hell of a lot more than we are, 
and you would like to think that in their lifetime they will live to see change the fruits of their labor rather than you know just maybe their children or their great 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 grandchildren you know you know i think the farmer is a great analogy and when people come back to me those who said i was a nut a kook job etc 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 um and they're like hey man i'm i'm sorry you know i've learned this and this and this yeah what i always try to do when they walk away is add a little bit of fertilizer and maybe point them in another direction and leave it up to them to figure it out um as far as you know the speed of things you know guys all we can do is what we can do mm, yeah and you know i've i've carried a huge burden all my life um about this information and and my experience and there there's just there came a time where I, I simply couldn't carry the burden. So what I had to do was just sort of just say, okay, um, I'll, all I can do is put the information out there. And I gave it away for years, just gave it away because it wasn't about the money. And it's still not about the money. And there is no money. And hell, I've been homeless for five years. How could this be about money for me? You know, it, it, but in giving it away, you just let it go. And you just allow it to go where it needs to go and, and you know, have faith that your service to humanity at some point has some value or has some worth. And, and that's all you can do. It's like raising kids. You know, you can put them in the house, but once they're out on their own, they're going to make their own decisions. Yeah. You know, and you can be there to help them get back up and, and be there to give them, you know, a dose of reality. But ultimately, they have to do it themselves. And, and, and that's how I've had to look at the information. Um, I don't know exactly how this is all going to play out. I mean, if it were up to me, this would have been done 15 years ago. Well, I think you're right regarding the karmic energy that we put out there. I mean, we, we, we are all doing it. Everybody who's involved in waking people up and doing what they're doing on radio shows and, and helping other people, we all kind of hope i suppose in the back of our, with the right intention i mean we're doing this with the right intention we're not looking to get anything back but just to see as as steve said the fruits of our labor and to see the you know some kind of light coming down the tunnel where we can see the change taking place before we pass over and we have to ask to go home to wherever we have to go home to and it would be nice to see it and if you say that you know I mean, we've 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 had different dates banded around from 2035, um, from as you say yourself, 2017, 2018, up to 2035. Now I don't know whether we'd be around in 2035, but we'll just have to see. But if the if the planet is speeding up in vibration and things are speeding up, well, then hopefully it won't take too long because the way things are going at the moment. We know, as we say, the, the elites and the NWO, they're, they're doing things, they're making mistakes, people are seeing that maybe that's part of the uh, the storyline, maybe that's what's supposed to happen, the, maybe these mistakes are there to be made, so when people see it, they realise that, okay, now I know that we're in a control system. Yeah, I, I believe that uh, we will all take away um, the knowledge that this will never happen again to us, um, and maybe to no one else in the galaxy. But let me also add this, that those of us who are light givers, light helpers or service to others, I believe that in previous lifetimes we've done this type of work before, and that's why we chose to do it. Because, you know, we know how hard it is, and we've, we've had the temerity and the uh, experience um, to know, you know, how to do this work, to try to help wake up a civilization. Maybe not the monetary piece, because most of them – don't use monetary systems but you know i mean that's that's been a kink but you know now we have that experience but let me say this to you 20 years ago or 23 years ago when i first started talking i could look i would talk to an audience of five or ten people and i mean deer in the headlight looks what are you talking about okay if you look at what today what's going on with the youtube the Internet, these young kids growing up, um, I mean, it is moving so fast. It is like the Mississippi River. It is just flowing. Now, it may seem slow to us because we've been in this for a long time. But in reality, the knowledge is getting out, and it's virtually everywhere for someone to find if they want. 
where back in the day, hell, we didn't even have email. You know? Yeah, yeah. That didn't even exist. Mm. You had to send a telegram. And you know, you know what's a kicker as well? You know, we can see the flaws in the system. Maybe because we have open minds, we can see the flaws in the system. And we know there's a lot of people out there who are, are not getting it and they don't see it. And it's when our kids, or maybe our kids' kids, look back at this time and go, you mean you didn't even see this? You couldn't see what was going on? You know, they look at this, they look at people at the time who weren't aware and might think, how the hell did you not see what was going on when it's right in your face? That's what I think would be the kicker for me when your kids or our grandkids will look back at this time, maybe in the history books, when history tells the real truth, and it'll be pointed out to the kids and the kids be saying, you mean you didn't see this? You didn't realise this was going on. Why didn't you see this? Because me and Steve say this all the time about our kids. When our kids grow up and they become adults and they say, well, what were you doing at this time? At least myself and Steve can say that we were doing something to try and educate and open people's minds. Um, but when other when other kids are asking their parents and you go, well, we were too busy watching TV and EastEnders and Carnation Street and Crossroads and all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so we are going to be kind of happy to say that we, we tried our best and we did what we did and we did as much as we could to try and make a difference. You know, hopefully what we do is making a difference. Um, but every little bit helps, as you say. Yeah, I, I wouldn't agree with anything there, and I have nothing to add to that. I think you nailed it right on the head. Cool. But, that, it, but it is what it is. You know, it is what it is, and we continue to do the work we have to do now in the present and tomorrow and the next day, you know, and that's all we can do. And it's like, to be honest with you, it's like we, we feel we have a moral conscience to do this. I mean, we don't get paid. Um, if anything, it costs us more, it costs us more money um, than obviously um, we, we fund it ourselves and we appreciate donations from our listeners. We do get the donations in and that is a massive help to helping help to pay the bills and everything else. So a big thank you to our listeners. And we're humbled by our listeners making donations to what we do here. So, it, it's, I mean, it is, we are very grateful that we do get the donations in. But we feel we have a moral conscience, and we've said it before, and myself and Steve have talked about this. Sometimes, when you're in the, in the kind of truth movement, if you want to call it that, you hit the brick wall. And everybody hits the brick wall at some time where you think, oh, you know what, we're not going to do this anymore. We've, we've had enough. We've, you know, that's it. We've, it's in the story. And all of a sudden, this energy comes in from somewhere. Is that right, Steve? That's right. And it yeah. just we get pushed down the river again for another period of time until we hit another brick wall. Um, so wherever the universal energy is, I don't know what it is, but it's definitely um, giving us a push down the river. Uh, I agree. I mean, that's happened with me. And it, it's, uh, you know, some of us have paid dearly to do this kind of work. You know, yeah. there's so many people that I know who have, who have had who have just paid very, very dearly. Hmm. They've lost more than money in homes. Uh, they've lost loved ones. And, um, you know, uh, there's just a level of compassion for humanity to do this work. And I, I truly believe that the ones that do it, they, they have that, that level of compassion and empathy for humanity. They, they, on some level, clearly understand the bigger picture here. And um, you know this is why we do it. Yeah. This is why we do it. Yeah, I don't know where the I don't know where the energy comes from, but we've we've hit that brick wall, and the energy has just come in and we're off again for another you know a couple of years or whatever the time period is. But Steve has more questions for you there, Steve. Yeah, we do have more questions, and this one came in a while ago, uh, Alex, from uh, one of our listeners called Grant Bino. And he says, question for Alex. Does Alex believe in the jinn? Does he think the jinn are archons? And, and do benevolent ETs believe in one creator? Uh, I can only speak for the A's. Um, I know that other contactees, uh, I believe, have addressed this themselves. Um, but the A's refer to what we refer to God as isness. Uh, there is some force, something, which is more easily defined 
on other dimensions and yet still unexplainable to them, there is some force that literally creates and holds uh, all the dimensions in place that um, uh, allows free will to to exist, that holds a frequency of love, which is far greater than anything else, there is something. What that is, even I don't have a clue. Um, but I can tell you that, you know, when I when I ref, when I pressed Viseus and and Morinay on this, their response is, we call it the isness because it is, but we don't exactly know what it isn't. But what we do is we work within the guidelines and the laws that it has established, and that's what it is, guys. It, it, there clearly is something. Yeah, sometimes though, uh, have, you, um, have you seen the films or the movies, Alex, uh, Men in Black? I have. Yeah, years, was, years ago. Yeah. Years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. But well, sometimes I kind of feel, I, I get the feeling, you know. Sometimes you, you speak to different people and they tell you about the universe and the galaxies and and it seems like it's it's just a massive. It's it's you know it's so big it's uncomprehensible, uncomprehensible. Um. But then you have other people saying, "Well, it's it's not as big as we as as we're led to believe." And sometimes I wonder, you know. Again, I I know this makes absolutely no sense. But sometimes I wonder, are we like that little locker uh, in Men in Black, where you know we we think we're in a massive universe, but in in the reality, we are so small, you know, and we're like let's say in a snow globe on, on a desk somewhere, or you know maybe we are, are you know sometimes. We're led to believe we're, we're you know, we we live in a massive place, if you like. But I, I, I think sometimes it may be a lot smaller. I know that it probably doesn't make much sense. No, it does. But, you know, the answer to that is I don't know. I do know that whatever we're dealing with right now, this this battle between good and evil, between light and dark, has to be fought. Um, because until I know, you know, that we're locked up in this little in a little locket or uh a, a dangly chain or something, you know, where I'm at at the present is where I'm at in the in the present. And, um, you know, we have to take care of business in the present because this is where our focus is and this is where we're creating our reality. Well, what's your, uh, ta- what's your take on the rapture and the kind of uh, biblical side of things? I don't want to get down to religion, but, you know, obviously there's a, a big belief about the rapture coming. We had Malachi Martin, who was a priest who talked to Alex Jones, I know, not Alex Jones, they're coast to coast. And he was saying about Planet X and things supposed to happen and the third secret of Fatima and all that kind of stuff. Have you looked into that at all? No, um, but I, when I, gosh. Um, no, I'm, I'm not familiar. I know who, I've heard of Malachi Martin. I didn't hear the specific interview um, with, um, guy who, who does coast to coast? Um, George Norrie. George Norrie. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. Not yeah. Not Alex Jones. Um, yeah. You know, my concern is is that people are going to be put in such a state of fear that they will surrender their sovereignty and their free will and allow themselves to be put on a regressive spaceship, not knowing it, and they will be taken out of here, never to be seen from again. Which is what we've heard. Uh, from another guest who said because it, yeah. because um, I have you know if you look at you know when we talk about the rapture okay the book of revelations the here's my take on the whole thing if 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 anyone has done any research on the Sinai Bible which you can only get from the British Museum and and they're as they interpret it they put it online I'm not aware but you can actually buy it but the pieces that they've already um, translated and put online. If you compare that to the King James Version, there are already over 14,000 huge uh, discrepancies. So, uh, you just think about, you know, those of you listening, just think about that. Um, if you've researched and studied the history of the church, the Roman Catholic Church, why would anyone trust them with anything? Well, I it's, agree with him. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, you must be kidding me. You know, why would you trust them with anything? We were told, so, we were told that the, the part of the Bible, if not all the Bible, was written by the Pisa family in 200 years after the fact. 
uh, it's possible. And, and, you know, there's no less than seven popes who have said Jesus never lived. It was a myth. <laughs> so, right. Okay. Well, yeah. So, but that's a whole other discussion. But seven popes are on the record as having said that. And and this is why we we talk about here, we talk about the fluid belief system. And our fluid belief system is basically just saying to people, keep an open mind. And then if some new information comes in, be able to change what you believe. If new information comes in, that updates what you know to something new. And you should always challenge your belief system, which is healthy, which means you carry on learning. But some people are stuck in a closed mind belief system. And no matter what you do, you can't shake them from there. And that's and fine, that's but they're not going to learn. They're not going to move on. Well, critical thinking, um, critical thinking is a, a perishable skill. And many people have chosen to let that perish. So they choose not to do any critical thinking to constantly evaluate and reevaluate where they're at, who they are, what they believe in, why they believe it, etc. And And again, those are your choices and those are people you we possibly could never reach. But that's okay. You know, that, that's, that's not necessarily the mission. The mission is, is to put the truth in front of everyone and let them choose to do it. And, and that's all we can do, guys. That's all we can do. Yeah. yeah. Well, if we kind of say, well, we always say there's three truths. There's your truth, my truth, and the real truth, um, which what some people say. And it's very hard. The tr- problem is, Alex, is trying to find the truth. What is the truth? Well, in the end, that's all that will be standing, will be the truth. All, everything else will fall away. Everything else will fall apart, um, you know. But, but in the end, all that will be standing will be the truth. And, you know, we'll, we'll all get there together, guys. We will all get there together, I hope. I'd love to be able to have the, the, the real history book of life, of what happened throughout history, and know that I'm reading the truth. Um, Maybe, well, whatever, maybe. whatever wasn't burned at the Library of Alexandria is probably somewhere hidden in the catacombs of the Vatican. Yeah, in the library, the Vatican Library is well locked there, up. There too, there yeah. too. Okay, Steve. Yep. Yeah, we have a, a couple more questions as well. Um, uh, this, this question came in earlier on. It's from uh, Hope, and it says, question for Alex. Does Alex believe we will experience a mass ascension into the fifth dimension sometime soon? Uh, the answer to the first part of that is yes, absolutely. Um, as to soon, uh, I don't know the timeline. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow would be great. Yeah. Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow works for me. Just before tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just before tea time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even right after tea, you know. Even, uh, yeah. Uh, tomorrow would be fine. <laughs> Okay, um, um, where are we now? Uh, this one, this question came in from one of the listeners on the people in, People's Internet Radio, and um, when we were talking about about incarnation or reincarnation, uh, he was wondering would suicide have any effect on someone's incarnation? Do you know? Um, I know that uh, everything everyone talks about um, uh, says that it's a very negative thing. Uh, even the Native American shaman um, uh, teachers, the Toltecs, uh, uh, the Chaldeans, the Magi, they have all said the same thing as well. Um, the extraterrestrial perspective on that, um, at least from the A's, is if you've made a decision to leave because of your, your exercising your free will, you have made a decision to leave. And how you choose to do that is entirely up to you, because there is no sin. Yeah. Okay. That makes We're sense. not born with sin. That's just not it. So, it just means that you're you're done with this particular lesson, and you're choosing another. But yeah. but well, just going just touching base on that. Surely, by you taking your own life, it means that you haven't. There's maybe some lessons that you're supposed to learn, but you haven't learned because you took your own life. Uh, that's possible, but you know, do you go? Are you damned to hell and all that nonsense? No. No, well, we, we but no, we actually did hear before that if if you if you do take your own life and you haven't learned whatever lessons you are supposed to learn, that you will come back down again. That yeah, you cannot ascend until those lessons have been learned. Yeah. Well, what makes you think you have to do it here? Why couldn't you go somewhere else and learn those lessons? Well, they do say yeah, earth, somewhere warmer would be nice. Yeah. Well, they do say <laughs> Earth, Earth as a planet 
it's a very hard planet to to learn lessons on you know and there's a lot of people again going back to this kind of energy people saying i want to go home you know there's a lot of people saying that no i don't know what they they refer to as home but it's definitely you know being away from the physical plane on this planet yeah uh, i get that i mean you know earth is like pea soup it's like trying to walk through pea soup yeah um yeah, it's very difficult, and the lessons can be very hard here um, because of the consequences um, and how quickly they 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 come down on you. But um, guys, I can only give you the A, the A's perspective. That that's all I have. Um, that's their perspective. Is that you know if you choose to leave, you leave. You can go somewhere else. Uh, if you choose to do those lessons somewhere else, you absolutely can do that. It doesn't necessarily mean you come back to Earth and have to do it. There are no written rules about that unless you go back up that tunnel of light and allow yourself to be reprocessed and sent back down here via the Archons. So we just so, so just so just clarify that for people that when they do pass over, when they see the tunnel of light or the light, they don't go towards it. They just ask to be to go home. No, you turn around, you turn your back to the light, and you will see the universe and at that moment you will know and all you have to do is stay or think i want to go home and bam you're gone you're home you are are you are where your spiritual um first spiritual or resonant incarnation is or was that's where you will go okay well that's that's good to know for people who uh we want to uh, remember that. Quite interesting. And we're, all, and, and we're also talking higher dimensions too. You you could leave and go to another dimension, wherever that place is for you. Okay, you don't stick in third density because we're already multidimensional. All you're doing is shedding your third density body to move up into another another uh, frequency. So do you, do you you and the A's believe there is karma and that the people who are doing nasty stuff on the planet down here? There has to be some kind of karmic um, judgment when they when they leave. Okay, well, they've never used the biblical terms of judgment uh, or anything like that. Uh, they've always referred to the word consequences. There are consequences which they would have to reap and own. So, but they don't use the words like karma um, or or uh, judgment. Um, but there are consequences, and those consequences can also affect them in other dimensions, in other lifetimes, in other places that have nothing to do whatsoever with Earth. Yeah. Well, because what we kind of have kind of come to believe as of today, but tomorrow that might change, is the fact that be, because we had um, uh, Ralph Ring on the show who uh, who, who used to build uh, anti-gravitational aircrafts in the 50s, and he's an expert in natural law. And we asked him about karma. And he said, of course, it's the universal law. Because we, we, we are frequency. We are energy. We vibrate on a frequency. And I kind of call it um, the, the kind of karmic boomerang. And if you put out negative energy, well, it's going to come back to you. If you put out positive energy, that's going to come back to you. So it's kind of the, the law of attraction, really, at the end of the day. So, and if that's the science and that's how it works, then... It's not so much a spiritual thing. It's just the way energy works. I don't know. That's, that's exactly right. And so, you know, we're talking about the same thing. It's just that the A's refer to it as it's something different. Their verbiage is different. Their perspective on looking at it is a little bit different. Okay? Yeah. But, you know, but let's, since we're on this topic, you know, uh, religions have done this. Metaphysics talk about this, about karma. You know, all of this, all of this, these, these, teachings they plant in our brain that earth is like a prison that earth is a place where you get stuck unless you become perfect that is a metaphysical blind guys that's a metaphysical blind all right that those seeds have been planted from other religions and other teachings um by regressive extraterrestrials that unless you do exactly what we tell you to do or you do this exactly this way, you'll never get out of here. You'll keep coming back. You're going to be stuck here. And that is not the lesson of the higher self at all. 
okay? Mm. You you can do this someplace else. You don't have to do it here. But, you know, it's important to note that, that all of this creates more anxiety in people because now everybody thinks they're stuck because they can't be perfect. Well, what is perfection? You know, how the hell can you possibly perceive Per, um, how could you possibly be perfect in a world, a planet, a system like this that is so set up against you? It's not possible. Okay? So we have to, we just literally have to change our perspective on how we look at ourselves, how we look at life, and seek those higher spiritual questions and answers. You know, Earth isn't a prison. It was never meant to be unless you, in fact, believe that it is a prison. And then it is for you. It's that simple. So it's perception of everything. Everything. Yeah. Everything. It's all perception. Okay. And obviously, what we try and do is say to people, you don't have to, it's not about believing everything that you hear. But as Aristotle said, the mark of an educated mind is to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. You need to be at least to be able to entertain it because that means that you are looking, you're reevaluating the information and your belief system. But if you can't even entertain something, then if you're, you have a closed mind, then you won't grow because that's how we grow because we ask questions, we we. We review what we know and then question it. And obviously, we have to have the facts. We can't just, you know, base it on an opinion. But we have to be open-minded. And this is why we call it the fluid belief system. And I think that's very important to grow spiritually and to grow in knowledge is just to be able to entertain things, to say, okay, let me have a look at that and I'll research it and see if that's valid and if it kind of resonates with me. Critical thinking is a perishable skill. And one of the things, one of the questions I once asked Viseas was if you had one question to ask humanity, what would it be? He responded immediately, why do you believe what you believe? That's the one question he would ask everybody. Why do you believe what you believe? Do you even have a reason for believing it? Do you even know the reason you believe it? Hmm. That's huge, guys. That's huge. Well, th people do say, I don't have a belief system. But not having a belief system is having a belief system. Because their, be their belief system <laughs> is not to have a belief system. Of course it is. <laughs> oh, <it's> Steve, <laughs> question. And, and, and of course they have a belief system. You know, um, they're, 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 you know part of, they're part of a system. They're part of a community. They're part of a family. They have a belief system about that. Otherwise, none of that would be there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, totally. It's 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 it's, it's double think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That is. Um, Steve, you got questions there? Yeah, I have another question from Joan. This came in earlier. Alex and Joan said that she hopes Alex has an insight into the future. Um, and can you tell us exactly how we should educate, help, advise, and support the people within the sh uh, this shift? Um, be an example. I mean, that's all I can do is to be an example and try to make myself available for people um, as best I can. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, I'm going to be going through the shift, and whatever lessons I still have to learn, I'm going to be going through, just as you will, Joan. Um, I think, you know, the old Boy Scout motto, you know, prepare for the worst but hope for the best, that's all we can do and hope that we've covered all the bases, because if we haven't, then whatever we haven't dealt with or we weren't aware of, you know, we ourselves will be confronted with those same challenges. So, you know, the best answer I can give you and the only answer I can give you is to try to lead by example. Um, but we're all going to go through this together no matter what. Yeah. And just look, just uh, go, going back, Alex, you, you did say that between the 16th and the 20th of March, we're going to, well, it's kind of it's uh, taken as a given that we're going to go through some uh, very extreme weather. Um, and, 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 it, and it'll only get progressively worse yeah. as we move through. And, you know, one of the things that um, many of there, – there's an excellent gentleman who's done a lot of research. Um, he works very closely with the Navy. His name is John Moore, M-O-O-R-E, here in the States. And he's done several talks, many talks. He has his own radio show, too, where he's, he's – He's talked a great deal about the earth changes that are coming, 
and he's had many naval personnel, you know, look at the map that's been created, and they've they've tweaked it to the point where now he knows what the United States Navy is expecting to happen to to at least the United States and the Earth. Um, I, I think it's worth checking out. Uh, there are many people, you know, who are talking about this, and of course we're all poo pooed um, because it's not serving the agenda of of the dark side of the dark messiah to you know give people a heads up so they can begin to prepare you know they want you to crash into fear uh, because then they're in control you know oh i'm i will rescue you i will save you you just need to take this chip you need to take this mark yeah. this tattoo uh you need to you know swear allegiance to me all this other horseshit and many people will go for it you know um as far as you know what it says many of the elected will be deceived I don't believe the elected are going to be deceived at all. I think they're doing the best they can to keep their families from being murdered. So they're going along with this agenda. I think many of them already know what's going on. But they sold us out. They sold us out a long time ago, and now they're absolutely stuck. Absolutely. I, I, yeah. We agree so, 100%. But what about storing food and, and the likes? Would you say that that would be a, a good thing? I'm sorry, say that again? Um, with the extreme weather, that's that's... Coming up between the 16th and the 20th of March, would you would you recommend people store food? Yes, I would. And, and, we, and yeah, absolutely. At least several months. Several months. Um, yeah. It, it's supposed to begin somewhere between the 16th and the 20th of March, and and then continue on. But that's when it's really supposed to start. And everybody be like, and everybody on the planet will be like, "What the hell is going on?" You know. And it's and it's because of. Of the of of the dark the planet X, uh, Hercopolis, um, Nibiru, whatever whatever name you want to give it, it's it's because of of the dwarf star, its presence. Um, just just understand that. Yeah, and we're going to be able to. We should again from what you said, we should be able to see this very clearly uh, around yes. the end of April and May, beginning of May. Yeah, uh, well, you know, on YouTube, there's there's several um, people who. Um, have used their cameras at certain longitudes and latitudes that are able to see it uh, for a very brief time at sunrise as a planet comes up. Uh, you can see it clearly behind our sun. Which is the, what they're saying is the second sun. Um, and yes. a lot of people are taking photographs of that. Alex, we have about five minutes left. What way, summing up the interview that we did and the information, what would you, what would be your advice to people based on what's going on? Um, in a kind of uh, summary. Oh. Um, I can only... I, I don't necessarily want to give advice to anyone um, because, you know, we're, we're all teachers. Yeah, yeah. So, but what I am trying to do for me is to get my head straight, uh, try to connect to my spiritual self as much as possible without relying on the A's or anybody else outside of me, okay, because there's no guarantees anyone's going to save me. But what I'm trying to do is empower myself to my absolute um, ability um, to be prepared for the changes and to move into a higher vibration. Uh, that's all I can do, and prepare to help my my family, should I be reunited with them at some point, um, to be prepared to help them, and and you know continue to share with folks uh, the perspective that I've been given, and you know I would absolutely tell you to research other perspectives. Somewhere in all of there, you will find what it is you're looking for, and that will empower you to not only, you know, uh, continue to improve your spiritual connection to source and empower you, you know, to connect with, with all of that you, your spiritual self and you are, but it will also put you in a position to help others, again, by example. And ladies and gentlemen, that's all we can do. Mm. You know, I mean, if there's something else that we can do, um, you know, to empower people and, and at the same time 
educate them to empower themselves where they can stand on their own, um, you know, teach them the fish, to use the analogy, yeah. as opposed to you catching the fish for them, then I think that's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, because, you know, once someone stands on their own two feet and, and they have empowered themselves, they can't go back. You know, they but, can't be enslaved anymore. That's right. Once the curtains are open, they can't pull them back. There you go. And and I, I think that's where we need to focus on. Um, I believe the governments are, the, what we call the governments, they're all eventually going to collapse because, you know, they're going to implode on themselves because they're so corrupt. Hmm. And, um, you know, and when that happens, we'll probably be the most free we've ever been is when the governments implode. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Um you know, I, I hope to keep talking to, to you folks, um, and and I wish people would stop bootlegging the webinars because that's my only stream of revenue. Yeah. <laughs> so. well, well, we will talk. I mean, we, 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 we'll definitely do a part two, Alex. But um, as you say, when you do the webinars, it is a fun to kind of pay your bills, and we ask people not to actually uh, to do that, but you know, pay for the webinars if you want to go in and hear you, because you know that's your source of income to feed yourself and pay your bills. That's it. There's nothing else. There's no net underneath me at all. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's. Uh, I think that's important. That's uh, well. It's been a, a brilliant uh, interview, Alex. I really enjoyed uh, speaking to you and getting the information. And maybe in a few months' time, after March, um, maybe April, May, we'll do a part two if you're up for that. And then we'll see where we are with uh, how everything is going. Um, if we can do, if if the, if the earth is still here, you don't, you don't know what the weather conditions are going to be like. But a big thank you for coming well, on. Much appreciated. Uh, okay. Well, you're welcome, gentlemen. And, yeah, I'd be totally open to that. Um, in March, uh, what we're looking for is primarily the jet stream coming down to the surface of the planet. Wow. That's quite serious. Yes, sir. It is. Wow. Okay. Well, listen, I'm going to pass you over to Steve. Steve's going to get all your details where people can find you and your webinars and stuff like that so they can log in. So, again, thanks, Alex. Over to you, Steve. Thank yeah. you, Alan. Take care, gentlemen. You've been awesome. Yeah, Alex, it's been it's been interesting information. So you know, it's kind of it sparked a lot of interest on the on the chat rooms there. So you know, it, it it's controversial. Maybe you know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Some people, as we often say, they they'll hear the information. It may not be you know the, the right time for them at this moment in time. But a seed has been planted. And so maybe maybe a little bit of watering that seed may blossom, and people will then look back and go, "I remember Alex Collier saying that." But anyway, in the meantime, if people want to find out more about your work, Alex, and maybe check out some YouTube videos, webinars, or website, can you can you throw those links over to us? Um, you want me to just give them to you now? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. you just call uh, them out, and I'll, I'll stick them up on the chat room. Uh, James Harkin in the UK has created um, uh, AlexCollier dot org. Uh, and that's where virtually all the information is. And, um, you know, there there are links and, and, and ways to email me there. Um, because of my limited Internet, um, you know, I have over 17,000 emails in my inbox, of which just over 2,000 are not read yet. So, and I try to respond, but I, 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 I get far behind. Um uh, because this is just a one-man show here. So um, I will do my best. Please be patient. If, if you want to ask me something, I will do my best to get back to you. And, um, you know, God bless everybody. God bless. Brilliant. Okay, Alex, just stay with us there. We're going to go over to a musical break, and then we'll be back after just. Just bear with us there for a minute. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com, UnitedWeStrike.com, and PeoplesInternetRadio.com. And we're back. That was Tommy Truther there during the break and United We Strike. I just want to mention there was a question in relation to the flat earth slash ball earth that was posted several times. Um, I decided that I would wait until we actually had the break there at the end to ask Alex that. Only for the reason if I had have asked him during the live show, it would have sparked off a lot more questions and controversy. So I just decided, you know what? We can probably do another show about that. But I did ask him during the break. I asked him because uh, you've, you were, you've been brought up in these craft and you've looked down. What have you seen, Alex? Have you seen a flat plane or a round planet? And he said that from what, from when he, when he was on these craft, he said he, when he looked down, it was a ball. Now, there you go. That, I, I know, I know there's a lot of information out there in relation to flat versus round. That's just what he said. 
But I, as I look, you know as well as I do, Alan, we could have asked that question, and the chat rooms would have lit up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, that's fair, that's fair enough. We we did, don't want to go down that road. Anyway, Steve, you're gonna we have a limited time, so let's catch up on a few things. You're gonna tell us about Facebook. Yes, Facebook. It's great, isn't it? Well, it is and it isn't. Um, we just we had a, just a, a little look at Facebook during the week, and for some reason we can't seem to get past a certain number of likes on our Facebook page. Now we know Facebook control and manipulate manipulate the Facebook, so. We would like to do a little experiment, and we we asked this experiment as well yesterday on the United We Strike Radio Marathon. And just for pig iron, as they say, if you have not liked their Facebook page, can you pop over to the website, oamradio.com? You will see the link there on the left-hand side for the Facebook page. Just pop over and, and like it. You can unlike it 24 hours you know, later, but just, just you know, for, for, let's say, the next 24 hours, if you just pop over and like it, because we just want to see... Um, if the figures go up, you know it's kind of like one of these little social experiments because we had inf- we had kind of stories or we have a the YouTube le- the you know the the likes or people watching a YouTube video that was kind of going up and up and up on certain videos and then all of a sudden it started going down. So we kind of figured that can't be right because how could somebody watch your video and then unwatch your video? So it didn't make any sense. So we just want to see if Facebook is doing the same thing. So if if you have a second, if you're on Facebook, just click on the link on the oamradio.com. Just like the page, and we're going. To, well, Alan's already monitoring the uh, the figures. I'm monitoring the figures. <laughs> I love it. So uh, we're just going to see what happens with that. Brilliant stuff. All right. Um, now during the week, uh, Independent.ie did report, and I seen the video of this lady, a Labour candidate branded a traitor as she meets angry protesters on. Hustings. Martina Gnocchi, who's a Labour candidate, claims she's been the victim of cyberbullying. On the video, she told the protesters, This is a democracy. Well, that's when you know that they're ignorant. I'm running for the Labour Party. Yeah, but it's a democracy. I'm entitled to do it, she told them. I care for my area, and of course, Arminians, the blind leading the blind, obviously, supporting her. Um, and that's the problem, folks. You know, not a clue about how the system works. Ignorance and bliss. Um, it's unbelievable that, um, you know, she turns around and she says, but it's a democracy. No, it's not a democracy. If it was a democracy, we'd all be able to vote and get what we want and have them. Um, and get the, uh, the the crooks in government out. But, you know, we know it's a, a it, well, well, we call it a democratic dictatorship because it's not a representative democracy at all. Um, but that was... Um, so that was that lady, Martine. There's a video out there. I mean, I know she kind of, you know, the protest has gone up to her, but, I mean, she's with Labour. I mean, she's a mainstream party, for God's sake, you know. Anyway, Steve, how's your week? Sorry, just finishing typing there. Um, no, my week's been fine. Um, back to work like everyone else who's lucky enough to, to have a job in these trying times that we live in. Uh, was back to work this week. So, yeah, everything kind of, you know, the Christmas is over um, and everything just kind of reverts back to to normal. Oh, that's your sorry. I do apologise. Text message coming. <laughs> that was my my phone going off in the background there. I forgot to mute before I. Oh, sorry. Okay. But uh, no, we're we're all back to everyone's back to back to normal. And uh, there was a couple of things that I, that I, I wanted to mention, but I'll save them for next week because I know we've only got five minutes left anyway. But uh, I'll just say that you know in in the times that we live in, and basically you know everything that's just kind of that the planet or the plane or the world is going through at the moment, or Ireland, or just your street, or even just your house. There's a lot of stuff going on, and there's a lot of animosity, there's a lot of arguing, fighting, and infighting in families. And just before I come up this evening, we had some of that as well. And on a large scale, if that's what's going on, if there, if there is people overseeing the planet, and the way we go on, the way we react to situations, and you know, infight between families and communities, then there's no hope for us. There really isn't. And I think... Um, as I learned this evening, the best thing to do is start at home. And if there is info, if you want to make a change in the world, start you no know, make that change in your own home, and have try and create peace and harmony within within the home. And then I think if you if you can do that, then there is hope for communities. There's hope for the whole world. There we go. Brilliant. How would you like that? Excellent. How was your good. week? Um, well, uh, just to adding to your part there, if you can manage your ego and challenge your own belief system, then you're going in the right direction. But if you can't challenge your own belief system and you can't manage your ego, well then, you're not going to go anywhere, um, to be honest with you. So you have to challenge your ego. Um, and challenge your ignorance as well because, you know, we, we, we know what we know and we don't know what we don't know. 
and every day we're learning and that's what it's all about being able to challenge it um, very quickly because we're in our time um, just very quickly online purchasing with your credit card be very careful because during the week my bank account got scammed and um, yeah the, the money that I did have in it which is very little got removed by the scammers but the bank um, actually sorted it all out quite quickly I reported it I seen it and I reported it basically it could have been a shop I went into or could have been a an online purchase that I made or you know it might have been an, an employee in a company that took the details you never know with these scams but basically the bank sorted it out but just you know just to let people know that just be careful with your credit card and the online sites it's very difficult I know I'm going to review my security now with my credit card and might use um, one of these kind of cards that you can just put a certain amount of credit on to make purchases on rather than use the actual credit card um, or should I say debit card I think I'll be doing that or else I'll use PayPal or something because I'm not going to be I'm going to be more cautious of that anyway and so just uh, just keep that in mind now next week we have on a, a candidate um, an independent candidate called Barbara Smith and she's an independent candidate for Longford and she's going to be coming on and telling us what's going on and apparently Longford is one of the counties that's been very neglected um, again austerity lows massive unemployment and they just don't seem to be doing anything like a lot of counties to be, on, to be honest with you and I did have a chat with uh, Barbara um, and Barbara was a member of Sinn Féin but um, she left because of the politics and what was going on in Sinn Féin again Sinn Féin being the main party so we're going to be talking to Barbara about that what happened, why she left and why she's now an independent and maybe that's what we need maybe we need more people to be independent and get away from parties I know we knew it what's her name uh, uh, Lucifer Crichton uh, uh, Lucinda Lu Crichton Lu Lucifer. <laughs> I love it Lucinda yeah there's about five people have left her party since they've joined you know I mean we have to watch for that when the old um, when people leave the mainstream parties and go independent as well you have to be careful I know there's genuine people there leave because they have morals but other people leave and they're still members inverted commas of the party but saying that they're independent and Ben highlighted that fact um, uh, last year I think or the year before last but anyway um, have a good week stay safe you have myself Alan James take it easy and we'll, uh, we'll see you next week take care bye bye ok and coming up there at 9 o'clock if you're listening on people's internet radio stream Vin is going to be on I'm not sure who's on Vin because I, I neglected to ask him but uh, stay tuned for Vin anyway we'll be back with you in 7 days time and uh, just a quick mention as well DDI NCM election launch in Mullingar next Saturday uh, the Greville Arms Hotel that is at 10am that just come in there from Brian on the chat room thanks for that heads up Brian so from myself Stephen George we'll do it all again next week stay tuned for Vin on PIR <laughs>